Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel and welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator 2. This is episode number 9 and we're doing something that I have never done before. I have never done one of the special transport missions and actually um, we're going to basically see if I can even survive this mission. I really did not realize, I, I knew this was a heavy haul job, but I did not necessarily think um, as I accepted it that it was going to be a, one of the heavy haul jobs. But again, because I've never actually done this before, uh, as of yet, I thought, hey, let's just go ahead and do it and let's make a video out of it. And you guys will be able to see if I mess up or if I do well or whatever. So uh, it says here, attention, you're about to haul a special transport cargo. There are two escort vehicles which will lead you. Uh, please be careful and follow their lead and suggestions in the route advisor. Special transports like this don't stop on a red signal and have the right of way in most situations. During these deliveries, checkpoints are made more often to save your current progress. Pay extra attention to the following. Avoid any possible conflict with the escort vehicles and keep the cargo between them. Do not drive out of the estimated route nor to filling stations, rest stops, etc. Obey speed limitations, which will be ensured by the front escort vehicle. Watch out for the overtaking traffic and other drivers on the roads. Change lane maneuver is this way here. So that is kind of interesting. Uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started with uh, with things here. This is our job. Um, this is this big, uh, big tank here. Let's see if we can figure out what this tank actually uh, is here. It's an industrial condenser and it weighs 60 tons, 60 tons. That is huge, but I do believe that our truck uh, can pull it. We'll go ahead and lower our tag axle. And also, just to point out here, we are uh, with the new update, 1.3.1. Um, this has the airlines, uh, the air and power uh, brake lines and everything are attached between our truck and our trailer. And of course, this is a feature that is also um, prevalent on ATS as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get with the action. Let me get back over here on this screen because we're going to want to make sure that we do everything as right as rain so we will uh, put ourselves in gear we need to turn off our windshield wipers because it was raining when I uh, first appeared over here that guy over there is arguing with somebody on the phone I can tell just from the body language that he is not happy at all and hopefully it has nothing to do with our job um, whatsoever either being late or otherwise so we're going to get on with the job here now we are in Brussels and let me explain to you why we're in Brussels I'm guessing that is our uh, follow vehicle there and hopefully our lead vehicle is up here somewhere but I will explain to you why we are in Brussels um, we are in Brussels because of the 1.3.1 reset um, obviously when you update ATS or ETS2 as far as that is concerned um, you will essentially let's see here if I can remember uh, how to turn on my uh, how to turn on my beacons uh, what are the beacons here that's flashers are those the beacons no I don't know I don't know how I can't remember how to turn on the beacons so I'm not going to worry about it right now uh, we are just going to follow the follow me vehicle here and he is giving us the right of way and there's another guy on the phone he does not look happy at all and looks like we've got some police uh, there that's uh, holding up the intersection that's all cool anyway anytime you have a um, update for ATS or ETS2 you're essentially going to uh, it's going to return you back to your main whatever your main HQ was whenever you set up the game initially you assigned yourself to a main headquarters location like for example for ATS my main headquarters location is Los Angeles and for ETS2 my main HQ location is Brussels uh, because when I started playing ETS2 it was before I found out about pro mods and um, I wanted to position myself in Belgium just because well that's where my mother and father-in-law live and it's where I visit fairly frequently and so sort of as a result of that um, I decided that well let's have our headquarters 
let's have our headquarters be in uh, from escort vehicle Dri vehicle is going to warn other drivers adapt your speed accordingly okay uh, it's kind of hard to read that message and um, and drive at the same time too bad it's not audible I would think that that would be uh, kind of a cool feature to actually have that be an audible message that you would hear as if it's actually a radio dispatch or something from the follow vehicle uh, back to us there so anyway we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to wait here for just a second grab my cheat sheet here and see if I can figure out what my uh, um, beacon is oh please wait for the rear escort vehicle okay there's our beacons we just turned our beacons on so that is that wait for the rear escort vehicle there's the rear escort vehicle I'm gonna grab a screenshot really quick Let's see, can I get a screenshot right here? Yeah, I'm going to get a screenshot really quick here. I know I'm breaking the immersion just a little bit, but I think this kind of tells uh, maybe a cool kind of story of what we're doing. And um, there we go. Um, so anyway, um, yes, so anytime that you, uh, that you essentially have a, an update such as this, you are going to kind of get reset back to that that point. They they kind of word it as such as you know it's a sort of for uh, for safety's sake or whatever you know they're going to park you in a safe location or whatever as if you were you know in the middle of the highway or something. Not that that you would be. I always tend to uh, typically end my days either at a rest area or at a garage someplace. And so, anyways, uh, even though I do have a garage in Rome, and we could have kind of resumed our Italian tour in Rome, I kind of thought, well, let's just go ahead and let the game reset us back to Brussels. Let's stay in Brussels. And then I saw this heavy haul load, and again, I just thought this was a, a heavy, a heavy load, not necessarily a, a load that we were going to get uh, escort vehicles and everything. And again, I've kind of been looking for these, but I guess you have to be in specific locations to get these jobs. And it just so happened that I was in that position, uh, being in Brussels. And so, hey, here we go. Um, so pretty cool. I believe, if I'm not mistaken because it has been some time since um, I actually got the DLC. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a DLC, this heavy haul DLC um, function. I'm pretty sure that is a DLC. So it's a paid thing that you've got to add to ETS2. Um, so, so yeah, so uh, if you're interested in this kind of, uh, this kind of thing, I, I think it's uh, rather cool, uh, rather cool looking. Certainly, it's cool to have the functionality of the of the um, of the escort vehicles. That certainly makes it a lot easier. You know, we don't have to worry about red lights, and um, we don't have to worry about our speed because the escort vehicles are going to set our speed for us, and that's really cool. And so we should do all right without getting any speed, speeding tickets. And maybe, uh, Doug Zorley, um, maybe this is right up your alley because uh, you're kind of like me. You tend to uh, collect a few speeding tickets for your jobs on ETS2. Uh, and so like me, um, that is the case. Changing lane, I forgot, I did not read that. I could not read all of that. I was too busy talking, but it looks like we're going to change lanes. And I'm assuming that he wants us to change lanes and he's going to scoot over. Okay, so that's cool. Anyway, uh, again, it's kind of a uh, extra special little nugget here. I wasn't expecting, uh, again, to get this job when I came downstairs to record this video. Of course, I just recorded a Farm Sim 17 episode. I think it was number 19. Uh, we uh, sold some wool and... I uh, did a little bit of spraying. I think we sprayed fertilizer, or I know we sprayed fertilizer on our sugar beet field, uh, or at least uh, did part of it. And uh, so yeah, so that was the video that you saw on Tuesday. On Tuesday. 
and you're seeing this one on Thursday. Now I do know that uh, you've kind of had two ETS2 videos not really back to back because last week you did not get a ETS or a ATS video and it was primarily because um, the update had occurred and I was waiting on the mods to get released. Now I am still waiting on the Russia map mod to be released as of yesterday when I checked. Uh, that mod still had not been updated but uh, Pro Mods, the new version of Pro Mods for this particular update for ETS2 is available and um, I haven't really checked it out yet because well there's just this is really the first time I've gotten into the game uh, since um, since I got that mod reinstalled and everything but uh, I would suspect that it's really cool and it's probably just an update uh, to update the features for the new version of ETS2. I don't think that they really added uh, much um, content. At least I don't recall seeing anything about that, but I could be wrong. Uh, I think it was just pretty much just a update just to make it compatible with the new version because I will tell you that um, I did try to, I think I, I don't think I realized that ETS2 and ATS had updated and so when I came downstairs last week to on the day that I would typically record uh, ETS2 uh, so that I could do the edit and everything and upload it and everything for my, my QA videos that I'm working on, um, I launched the game and the game booted up and of course I got a message pretty early on uh, in the process of it starting up that you know said incompatible mods detected and then I'm like hmm I wonder what's going on and then of course it, it clicked that um, I click that um, changing lane maneuver is coming adapt your speed to avoid a possible crash okay um, let me make sure nothing is over there um, so anyway, I realized that, oh, well, I guess it's the update for ETS2 and ATS and double check that. And of course, that was what the case was. And um, then I'm thinking, OK, well, do I just disable those mods and go ahead and record the episode? Or do I wait and see how much long, you know, how long it would be before the updates for these mods come out? And with my experience with pro mods is they update relatively quick and I'm guessing that it was probably updated within a week of release of the updated version of, of ETS2 and I almost immediately started seeing updates uh, mod updates for uh, some of my ATS stuff uh, coast to coast has been updated um, the other map mod that I'm running I can't the US 99 or something like that that has also been updated. Um, a couple of the trucks that I that I enjoy uh, driving, those I think also have been updated. So really, I think I'm only missing one mod uh, for ETS2, and that is the Russia map portion. So that includes you know Russia and some of the other um, countries over in that maybe Poland. I can't remember if Poland is part of the Russia map or if it's uh, part of Pro Mods. But anyway it'll come out and when it comes out I'll get it installed and everything so um, no hurries no worries whatsoever uh, let's see we're about 105 kilometers away from our uh, drop point and I'm just gonna glance over and see how long our video time is about 13 minutes in so we should probably do alright for getting everything uh, delivered and everything within within 30 minutes. Now it was really cool when I first um, got to the point where we picked up the trailer uh, and drove across the little uh, manhole cover which is the icon because I'm running the mod that, that changes that um, it's the immersion mod. We're going to do another lane change here so we will wait for uh, He's going to warn other drivers, so I guess we're going to go ahead and scoot over, and that's fine. Um, anyway, so when we showed up for to pick up our trailer, uh, and we accepted the job, it was kind of cool because it it um, it automatically filled up our truck uh, for us. It topped off the tanks. I'm not. Sh I'm guessing it did that so we could avoid. Even though I thought I had plenty of fuel for the job but anyway uh, I guess it did that so we could avoid having to stop for fuel and um, 
it also had a bunch of men standing around the trailer, you know, like in, with clipboards, inspecting, and all this kind of stuff. That was kind of cool, and I really didn't know it was going to do that. If I knew that, I would have essentially started the recording um, uh, ahead of time, but I did not know that. I sort of figured, okay, well, I will kind of do my usual thing, which is accept the job and get backed up to the trailer and get connected and then basically start, uh, start the video up, but... Uh, oh well, uh, next time I'll make sure that I include that in the video so you all can see it if you have uh, not had the opportunity to enjoy this mod. Certainly lots of police out helping us, helping keep the uh, roads and everything safe. Now this is going to be our first uh, major uh, turn maneuver, I suppose. Uh, second to getting out of the of the uh, the lot back there, but that went okay. And certainly don't want to take any signs down if we can avoid it. I doubt that there is friendly over here. Well, we are in the Netherlands, uh, or at least we're headed to uh, Amsterdam, I think, is our drop point. So uh, we probably know some of the same uh, highway workers and everything that tend to the signs and everything around Green uh, Green River. And of course, we're we're quite notorious for knocking down signs over on Green River, uh, between myself, Billy Bob, and Jack, of course. Driving at this slower speed is um, I haven't set my cruise control yet because we haven't really been on a speed that was um, um, constant enough to really bother with it. But my foot is kind of hurting because. Uh, I'm usually used to pretty much keeping my foot either all the way pedal to the metal or uh, using the cruise control so my foot is kind of uh, feeling like it's going to go to sleep. Hopefully it won't on me until we get this job done. I'm kind of stressed getting through that tunnel but it looks like we made it. There's a, a balloon in the in the sky. Just got back in the real world, just got back from Home Depot uh, a few minutes ago, well, I guess about an hour ago, I suppose. Um, came home this afternoon, you know, you never you never know, are, are, are you like me? Are you like me, guys? Uh, especially, I'm, I'm specifically talking to the guys here, okay? I know, I know I've got some, I know I've got some ladies that, that watch the channel, and I very much appreciate uh, you ladies watching my content. Um, but I'm going to speak directly to the guys here for a moment. Um, do you ever come home and, and just, you have no idea what is going to come out of your wife's mouth uh, as far as uh, projects and to do things and all that kind of stuff? Uh, if so, raise your hand because I'm, I've got my hand in the air right now uh, like I don't care. But, um, but yeah, so I come home um, this afternoon. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I guess this is probably, is this Schiphol? Yeah, this is probably Schiphol uh, Airport in Amsterdam. We're probably close enough uh, to that. I flew out of uh, Schiphol not too long ago in the flight sim, um, strangely enough. But anyway, uh, back to my story. So, um, yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I come home from work and um, get home and uh, the wife is like, want to go to Home Depot and buy a tree? And I'm like... Okay. Oh, there goes a Lufthansa 747. I'm like, okay. Um, so what brought this on? And she's like, well, we had a tree in the little front part of our yard that died uh, about a year and a half ago, I guess. And um, and so she's kind of been, well, she's kind of changed her mind a couple of times. And I know that 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 ladies have reserved the right to change their mind. And all that kind of stuff, and us, us guys, we just have to, uh, we just have to adapt and 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 go on about our business and everything, and do whatever do whatever they say they want to do, right? Uh, if Mama's not happy, no, nobody's happy, right? So um, she's like, I want to go to Home Depot and buy a tree after dinner. I'm like, okay, well, you know, that's cool, that's fine. I'm thinking, I'm thinking she's talking like a little shrub or something because we just have a Ford Escape. Uh, so if you're not familiar with that little SUV, it's a, it's a smaller uh, scale uh, SUV. Um, and um, yeah, that's really all I can tell you about it. 
and so I'm thinking just a little shrub or something, you know, and, and not really, not because she had talked about not putting a tree back there and all this kind of stuff. She talked about the fact, well, maybe that part of the yard needed like another year before we would put a tree in there just to, um, just to give the soil and everything a, time, a chance to rest and everything after the other tree um, died of old age, I suppose, or maybe it got some kind of... Uh, of a bug or something like that it just it just died but anyway um so i'm thinking again i'm thinking small shrub not really having any idea where she was thinking about placing it so we pull up at home depot and i get ready to walk in thinking that it's going to be in the inside of the garden department and she's like no 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 she's like come here and so um there at our home depot that we shop at they have a portion of the parking lot that's um, gated off this time of year where they have their trees and uh, a lot of their outdoor stuff but they still have some stuff indoors as well and but this is the area where the trees are and I know you probably uh, can uh, can understand where I'm going next and so next thing I know I'm picking up a maple tree uh, of all things it's about um, 10 feet tall and it, the pot is probably about two about two feet in diameter about two feet tall it's about all I could lift and about the only reason why I could even lift it was because some of the soil had been taken out or fallen out or whatever and so she's like this is the one I want and so I'm like okay um, got another lane change coming up here and so I'm like okay honey whatever you want you know um, I will gladly please I that's my that's my job in life is to keep my wife happy and I quite enjoy uh, doing that and so we get the tree loaded up in the car and of course we only live about five miles from Home Depot and thankfully I don't have to like get on the interstate highway or anything uh, I'm able to uh, kind of drive through some back streets and everything to kind of get from there uh, from Home Depot to our house so did that and got it home and of course I pretty much had said on the way back from the store from Home Depot I'm like okay well this is gonna have to wait until um, until this weekend because obviously uh, this is the 21st of May I believe it's Monday the 21st I think or 20th one of the two and of course we're coming up on Memorial Day weekend um, and so uh, so she's like, okay, that's fine. You know, I mean, I think she understood that the tree has been living in this little pot for uh, several weeks, I'm sure, by now, and it can live in that little pot for four more days. And then come this weekend, nice three day weekend, I can spend um, Saturday digging the hole for this and get it planted. Because, I mean, the hole, I'm assuming, well, the instructions on the tree says to dig the hole twice the size of the pot. Well, the pot's two feet by two feet or so, so that's a, a nice, um, that's a nice four foot hole, right? So, um, I'm liable to strike gold uh, in the process, but anyway, so uh, I figure, okay, well, I can do that on Saturday. I can, you know, rest and recuperate on Sunday and Monday. Uh, because this is liable to kill me and so uh, anyway that's that's that so we are coming up we're zero kilometers away from our drop point and I'm really not sure where it's going but I'm assuming that our vehicle is going to tell us and I'm assuming it's going in there and hopefully we can get it in there it would I would hate to come all this way and not actually be able to get this thing underneath a terminal window or uh, awning. Hopefully it's going to fit through there. What do you think? That just barely squeezes through there. At least I'm not going to be responsible for um, uh, for pulling that thing down uh, not on my watch anyways all right there's our cones so we're gonna head for our cones so anyway wish me luck ladies and gentlemen and um, especially you gentlemen um, you know do you often come home and 
and uh, you know you have a project that you had no idea that you're going to be doing and next thing you know uh, you're going to be doing something that's that's actually very similar to how the fireplace project came about it was kind of a spur of the moment kind of thing um, she had told me that she had been looking at some tile and everything and I'm thinking okay well you know this is gonna this is gonna be a project that she's gonna take you know she's gonna take a good solid two or three months to select the tile and all this kind of stuff and, and next thing I know um, I'm scraping the old fireplace tearing the old fireplace down and putting new tile and everything up okay so let's see how we did T to uncouple the trailer and remove the brake lines and all that stuff and hopefully we get an excellent there we go uh, our first uh, achievement for not a big problem got that done click continue all right well ladies and gentlemen this video is about 25 minutes long and so I'm going to let you get back to what you've been doing and I just wanted to say thank you all so very much for uh, watching my videos thank you for subscribing to my channel if you're not a subscriber and you're just kind of a lurker just kind of um, uh, watching behind the scenes or whatever please click that subscribe button it is a huge motivator uh, it really really is I, I know I'm not the only one that says this um, but it really does motivate us uh, content creators it gives us uh, sort of an indication that the things that we do and everything uh, folks enjoy and uh, it's kind of that it's kind of that indicator it's that it's that dashboard kind of if you will and I would really like to give a special thank you out to D Coleman D Smith and E Gell uh, thank you so very much for being uh, patreon subscribers um, I appreciate that if you would like to become a patreon subscriber and support the Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel uh, the link is down below any amount that you want to uh, pledge is going to just make me smile uh, as big as Texas. Any amount, any amount whatsoever. Uh, the way it all works is 90% of the proceeds that I'm going to make between the YouTube uh, advertising, and I appreciate you guys watching those, by the way, and the Patreon stuff. 90% of that's all going to go back into the channel through giveaways and such. I uh, already talked about the fact that we're going to be uh, giving away copies of Farm Sim 19. Uh, later in the year, that's probably going to be the big giveaway that we'll do. Uh, do a couple of those, and then 10% uh, is just to help cover my internet costs and you know stuff like that. Maybe buy myself a cup of coffee or something. Um, but I really appreciate those that are subscribers. And if you're interested in subscribing, then uh, the information will be down below. Without further ado, I just want to say thank you all so very much for watching. Take very good care of yourself and also of each other. And uh, this was fun. This was a really fun job. And if you don't have this DLC, I would encourage you to pick it up. I'm going to be picking uh, or I'm going to be doing more jobs like this. So we'll try to find another one. Maybe for the next video or something, try to find it so that you can kind of see the uh, the opening stage of it. See all the, the men and everything standing around it uh, and everything. That'll be kind of cool. So anyway, uh, again, thanks for watching. God bless you all. Take care of yourself and also of each other. And also, please take care of those four-legged friends. And I'll see you back here either on ETS2, ATS, or Farm Sim 17. Bye-bye for now.